Hi, I'm Rick Fussell, and this is the Ingrain Workshop. In today's video, is going to be more geared toward uh, beginner uh, woodworkers. I know it's frustrating sometimes being a beginner woodworker and looking out there through YouTube land, and all you see are these quote unquote Gucci workshops with all their Gucci equipment. Um, and it can be overwhelming sometimes. So I just want to set the record straight. Um, I've been woodworking for a long time. I don't own a joiner. Um, you can definitely mill wood without owning a joiner. And a joiner is a pretty expensive piece of equipment, especially for a beginner woodworker. So today I'm going to show you how to create two jigs, a planer jig and a joiner jig that will help you mill lumber properly without the use of an expensive joiner. So let's get started. Okay, so for making our joiner jig, uh, I've just got a piece of scrap plywood. It's 24 inches wide by 48 inches long. Um, I believe it's just a five ply sandy, uh, sandy finish uh, plywood, nothing fancy. And then I've just got some poplar. I got a little bit of T-track. I think that's about 42 or 14 inches. And then I've got uh, just a hold down clamp. <clears throat> so out of this plywood, we're going to be making two jigs. They're both for joining wood. Uh, there's going to be a, uh, an eight inch piece that we're going to rip out and that's going to be for the joiner jig here at the table saw and then the balance of the plywood left over which should be around uh, 14 15 inches that's what i'm going to use for my planer jig that way we can use the planer jig first to surface uh, the tops and bottoms of the boards then we'll use the uh, table saw joiner jig the eight inch piece to, to join one edge 90 degrees to the top and bottom and then we can finish up the rip up against our table saw fence. So let's get started. Now with the planer jig ripped down to 14 inches and the um, joiner jig ripped down to eight inches, we're now gonna rip down the uh, back fence for both jigs. Um, I'm gonna rip the poplar down to inch and a half uh, we're using three-quarter inch plywood, uh, so that's going to leave me a three-quarter inch above the jig for our pieces to sit on. Generally, I'm working with three-quarter inch plywood, so that's going to work out for me. Um, if, you, if you use half inch or anything less than that, you might want to consider, at least on your planer jig, ripping that back fence down to half an inch or, or whatever the uh, thickness that you typically plane at. Um, I usually don't plane anything less than three quarters of an inch, so I'm going to go ahead and rip this down an inch and a half, and then that'll leave us three quarters of an inch proud on the back of both the uh, joiner jig and the planer jig. So now we're here at the uh, miter saw station, and what I'm going to do is my uh, inch and a half inch poplar that I just ripped off at the table saw. Um, I'm going to take and cut those at 8 inch and 14 inch lengths. One for the uh, joiner jig and one for the planer jig. So here I'm going to take my back fence. This is the uh, planer jig that's 14 inches wide. I'm going to take and just pre-drill and countersink uh, probably four, uh, four holes in the back for just these uh, inch and a quarter drywall screws and I'll probably glue it as well to fasten it to the back of the jig.
Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is cut the uh, dado in the um, joiner jig to accept the uh, T-track. Uh, the T-track is three quarters of an inch, and I went ahead and marked it here on the board. We're going to put it right in the center of the board. I think the T-track is 14 inches long, so I've got a stop set up here on my uh, router table fence, uh, which will let me know where to stop the cut. Um, I'm going to make this cut with just a, a three-quarter inch straight bit and we're going to do it in two passes. Um, I'm going to do the first pass, then when I do the second pass, I'm going to take my three-eighths inch setup block and go ahead and raise the bit to the final height and then make the final cut. Next, we're just going to square up the, uh, the groove. Now with a little CA glue, an activator, and some screws, we're going to fasten the T-track to the actual joiner jig. Next, I'm going to install the hold down clamp. So next here at the joiner jig, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is pre-drill and countersink for these inch and a quarter screws. Um, we want them to protrude through the back of the fence, um, and we'll, I'll probably put about six to eight along the back fence here, and it's, they're going to sit above the plywood bottom. And this is simply so you can take your stock wood and then when you put it in the jig, um, this will just, you can jam it into the end grain and it will just keep it in place in the jig while you joint one edge of the board. So before we can uh, start joining the board and using the joiner jig, um, we've got to plane the top and bottom surface of the board. Um, so what I've done is on the planer jig, uh, I just sat it on here and you can see it's, it's bowed here in the middle. If I turn it this way, uh, you'll, you'll see that uh, I can lift up this end over here. Um, so. What we want to do is we want to make sure that the board uh, is flush to the, uh, to the planer jig. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shim it up because you just want the board to sit flat on the jig so it doesn't rock. And I think that's going to do it. So um, the next thing we're going to do is just use a hot glue gun just to glue uh, the board to the shims. Now with our board hot glued to the shims in the jig, we can just run the whole jig and board uh, through the planer just to surface the top edge of the board. Now with the top surface of the board planed, we're going to use a chisel and just pry it loose from the jig. Uh, again, it was just fastened with uh, some hot glue so it comes up pretty easily. And then we just remove the shims and then we can run the bottom of the board through the planer like you normally would without the jig. So now with the uh, top and bottom surface of our, uh, of our rough sawn lumber uh, plane down, 
I've now got a three quarter inch piece of milled lumber here. And now to put a joiner on one edge, I'm just gonna take and put it in the jig. And maybe give a sixteenth of an inch overhang on this side of the, the jig. Then we're going to clamp down the piece, and I've roughly got, I guess, an average of 16, a sixteenth of an inch um, overhang on this side of the jig. Now on the other side of the jig, this side is going to actually run against the fence of the table saw. So we know that this is a factory edge on this plywood. And we know that we have a straight edge over at our fence. So now when we rip this through the table saw, that's going to give us a jointed in here. So now we'll have a 90 degree surface between this edge and then both faces um, of the board. So now I've got my fence set at eight inches. I've raised up my table saw blade. So now I've got about a blade height uh, past the uh, board. And now we can just run this through. So this edge has now been joined and we can take it out of the jig and put this end up against the fence. So that's how you can mill up uh, some lumber if you don't have a joiner. You don't need a joiner. Uh, sure, it's convenient. It's nice to have a joiner um, But if you don't have a joiner don't think that that's the end of the world You can always join a board even without a joiner um, So like I showed with these two jigs both the plant planer jig and the uh, table saw or the joiner jig uh, You can joint and mill lumber uh, Without a joiner. So I've got a piece of board here now that is exactly three quarters inch thick and then both edges are 90 degrees to the surfaces of the wood um, and then it's uh, three quarters of an inch I think by 36 inches and uh, and this is typically the size lumber that I'm using for boxes that I'm making um, so this works out great for me and also uh, I think it it puts a better edge on it uh, doing it here at the table saw and you know everything's 90 degrees well that's going to be a wrap for this one I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video helps you out. If it did, then please uh, consider giving it a like. If you're new to the channel and you like DIY projects or woodworking projects, then please consider subscribing and ringing that notification bell so you'll be notified of all our upcoming videos. Now, I made this video primarily for beginner woodworkers. I know it's very discouraging when you go out to YouTube and you're looking at all these channels and everyone has all, these fancy, all this fancy shop equipment or what I consider Gucci workshops with all these Gucci equipment um, that you just can't afford as a beginning woodworker. So uh, I hope this is a way that you can see that, you know, like me, you don't need a joiner. You can mill wood perfectly without one. You don't need it by just using this planer jig and this uh, joiner jig. That's all you need. And you can make it relatively cheap out of just uh, some plywood from the big box store and you're in business. You're able to mill lumber um, and, and start woodworking projects. So like I said, this video was primarily geared for the beginner woodworker. And again, don't be discouraged when people bust out dominoes and joiners and all this other equipment because there's more than one way to, uh, to do something in woodworking and you'll learn that uh, as you progress in your woodworking career. So again, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. Again, this is Rick with the Ingrain Workshop. We'll see you next time and have a wonderful day.